Hello, Internet Magic Man here from MMOBomb.com, bringing you another first look video. This time it's for the trading card game Spellweaver, brought to you by Dream Reactor. Now, this is a free to play trading card game, uh, and I've heard comparisons of kind of Magic the Gathering smushed together with Hearthstone, and, and that's kind of a fair comparison, at least to get started. Now, the game is currently in open beta, it is set to launch uh, in early February. So there should be a note here for you guys, though. The uh, There really isn't too much of a tutorial. Uh, there's a little bit of one where they take you through a couple of different cards. As soon as you boot up, it throws you into a match, and they kind of give you an idea of some of the basic card functions. Uh, but there are significant details laid out, uh, missed out. Uh, left out. Blah, 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 blah. So if you play in open beta right now, uh, keep in mind that you may have a few matches before you really get a feel for some certain things because there's an awful lot going on. So before we get uh, started into a, ga into a game here, we're going to show you, here's my leveling. You gain fame by playing matches, whether that's against the AI, ranked against other players, or just casual matches against other players. You earn gold through questing. You can see various quests here all over the map. Now, a lot of them are still uh, locked. So, like, for instance, this one here, to unlock this area, I have to win 10 quick battles, and I've won 9 out of 10. If I do that, it will unlock this zone, and that might give me additional quests with greater rewards. Uh, and there's quests all over the map like that. Uh, you'll earn gold through leveling up your fame. Each time you level, you'll get a chunk of gold, or uh, when you hit five, you'll get a, another deck to start with if you don't like the first deck you picked. Uh, so you will get rewards along the way. Gold can be used to buy packs of cards, and so can crystals, which is the cash shop currency. Pay some cash, get some crystals, spend it that way. Before we jump into a match, though, I want to take you through some basics on the cards themselves because there's a lot of items here. Six different aspects to choose from. You'll pick one of those right off the bat, and that will be your starter deck. Shrines are your basic... Uh, resources. So in Magic the Gathering, you have mana. In Hearthstone, you have mana. In this game, you have mana or rage levels. Uh, in this case, rage, because it's a, a red rage deck based on the uh, different aspects shown above. So you're not just managing one resource here. You're managing two. When you throw a rage shrine out in your deck, you can opt to increase your rage level by one, or your mana level by one, and you'll get an extra card. So it's a nice way of not only building up mana, but if you have to have a card deficiency going on, gaining mana will also get you an extra card. So that can kind of be helpful. So what do the two resources mean? Let's take a look. So up in the upper left-hand corner of the card, you see a three with the purple uh, hexagon there for the mana. So that's going to have three being the mana cost, but it also is a requirement of at least one of the green level. Let's pull, pull up a red card since that's what I showed you, a rage shrine. So this would cost four mana and one rage level. Uh, and the different requirements down this banner would show you if there were additional requirements. For instance, the Shaman Fire Dancer requires one rage level and one level of any type. So playing exclusively with a rage deck to start out with, I would have to have two rage levels and three mana to cast this card. Now, here's where things get even more a little one step more. So we're used to seeing three and two, stuff like that. Three being the attack, two being the health of the creature, and then a little description, some cool artwork, and then what type of card that actually is, whether it be a creature, an artifact, whatever. But you also have swiftness arrows here, and these play a big role in the game because unlike Magic the Gathering, where whoever is being attacked is the one that decides the blockers, and that's it exclusively in a traditional Magic the Gathering game mode, in Spellweaver, you actually have the option as the attacker to attack specific targets. It's not just to attack the champion and let the defender decide. But you have to have equal to or greater swiftness. So if I have this Shaman Fire Dancer out and I am being attacked by one creature that has 
two swiftness or one swiftness, they cannot opt to ta attack my shaman. They have to attack my hero directly. If they have three or four swiftness, they can opt to attack my shaman fire dancer directly. Crafting. Uh, you have to be a level 11, but it's similar to a hearthstone where you can use dupes and craft cards, things like that. Uh, let's kind of get, let's get into a game now. And then we'll come back and look at the marketplace and the cards and what these heroes are. We're going to play quick battle. And if I win it, uh, it will unlock this area and I'll get a couple of cards too. So that's cool. A flying dragon, a lizard barbarian, and another dragon fire, which that card has saved my ass more times than I'll care to admit. Uh, we're going to play a friendly game against the, or a, uh, play against the AI. You have optionals as far as your difficulty goes. Easy, normal, hard, and that ups your fame multiplier, which is basically how you level. We're going to start with an easy game, just because I wanted to go very quickly here so you can see the ebb and flow of a game. All right, so I've got my three rage shrines, couple one, threes, and fours. I'm going to keep that hand. I could draw that again if I wanted to, maybe if I didn't get enough mana, uh, and I would uh, be able to draw a new hand. But I'm stuck with that. You don't get to keep drawing. So I'm going to play that for rage level, shown right here. And look at the screen. And I have plenty of time, so I can stop for a minute and go through the screen here with you. So I've got my deck, which has 53 cards. I've got my discard pile, which I can look at at any time, and it'll show me all cards in the discard pile. I've got my hero and my health, 20, my current hero health. I also have one he uh, hero ability right now, Circle of Fire, which costs one mana, and I have to have at least one rage level. And I can use that to prevent an enemy creature from being able to block, and then I won't have the access to that for two turns. Skipping over the cards just for a second, on the right-hand side, I also have Divine Offering. I can exchange this card... Uh, exchange a card in my hand for a shrine card among the top four cards in my deck. If I don't have a shrine, I get nothing. Uh, and that's it. But you'll notice that the play board is divided into two sections on my side of the playing field. You've got your normal creatures will go in the top section of the board. In fact, let's cast a Goblin Warrior, and boom, you see he's in the top half of the board. The bottom half of the board is for, and I don't have any at the moment, but they are uh, support ability or support creatures or characters or artifacts or whatever they may not be directly involved in attacking they may be creatures that can defend but can't attack they they have an ability that you could use any creature that's classified on its card as support is going to go in this back half of the playing field i'm going to end my turn let the uh, computer play hasn't played anything yet i'm going to throw out another card Level Rage level 1 is fine for now. We need to start building up some mana. Uh, although, I only have one card in my hand that has a Rage level of 1 requirement. A Fireball. So we are going to need Rage levels in just a minute here. But we'll, we'll ding the opponent for 2 damage real quick. Take him down to 18. And again, this particular deck that I'm playing with is a complete starter deck. Uh, it was the deck that I picked right out of the tutorial. I'm going to take a Rage level this time. Uh, so there are no modifications or additional cards added. I have gained cards, but I have not uh, put them into my deck yet. So you're seeing me play with exactly the type of deck that you would get the second you came out of the tutorial. As far as little modifiers and things like that, if you've played Magic the Gathering, you're going to be very familiar with a lot of options. In this case, this card, Goblin Fireworker, has an ability where I can take one mana, sacrifice the Fireworker, and destroy an artifact. Of course, you'll have things like Unstoppable, which is the equivalent, the Spellweaver equivalent of uh, Trample in Magic the Gathering. So, a lot of stuff you're going to be familiar with. Now, we've got a Totem Artifact here. Whenever an allied shaman enters the field, you may pay one energy. So that's that four in the lower right-hand corner. If you do draw a card at the end of the turn, if Totem of Legends has no energy, sacrifice it. All right, so we're going to... What do we got here? Um, I have the ability to destroy an artifact. So we're going to get that Totem out of there. I can right-click on cards if I want to. Actually, pretty much right-click on 
anything in the damn, uh, here's the log. I can take a look at that spark of initiative just by, I can look at the opponent's discards. So I'm gonna left click, select to do that and destroy that thing. Get that out of there and we'll attack with all. Now I'm attacking with all just because it really doesn't matter. My opponent doesn't have things out here. But again, I could itemize where certain creatures attacked and uh, what creatures I was opting to take off the board. My turn again, Rage Shrine. Um, we still need mana and then we're gonna take a Rage next hand. All right. So this has Swift, can attack on the turn it enters the field or moves to the front line. And other goblins I control are Swift, so we're going to throw that in there. We're going to play that. That way any goblins that I summon from here on out will automatically be Swift, as long as that creature is alive. And they killed that real quick with a fireball. But we've got a 20 to 8 commanding lead here. Again, I'm playing it on easy just because I know it'll be a, a pretty quick match. Uh, and we can get back to showing you some other things. Um, all right, let's, uh, what do we want to do here? We've got a fireball, we've got our dragon fire card, five damage. Let's go ahead and do that. Take five damage to my opponent, and then we'll attack all, and barring an ability, that'll be the end of the match. And there it is, 20 to negative one. Go, Magic Man, I've gained 61 gold. 12 fame. These multipliers vary based on the difficulty level that you pick. And I've also now won twin quick quick battles, so I can claim my cards. Nice flying creature with a, a nice little sub ability there. Lizard Barbarian can't block. Whenever Lizard Barbarian attacks the enemy hero, gains one attack until the end of the turn. And another dragon fire five damage to a creature or hero, which you saw me use in the last battle. Now, once I hit level five, I was uh, given the choice of one of the, si the one of the five remaining aspects to unlock. So, I picked the undead hordes, which opened up that starter deck. So you can gain additional starter decks right away uh, after. I mean, it took me maybe an hour, if that, an hour or two to get to level five. Go into the marketplace. Now you can see your uh, conversion rates here. Small packs, which contain four cards, are 5,000 gold. Ten packs are 12,500 gold. You can buy a 12-pack box with 120 cards, but that is through the cash shop currency only. Now, those are your basic packs. You do have extra packs that are specifically lined for either the good three aspects or the evil three aspects. So this contains the same as a normal pack, except it's only going to be order, wisdom, or nature cards, where the evil pack would be rage, dominion, and corruption. Now I have a rage deck and I, ha I unlocked the corruption starter deck too. So I can kind of guarantee the types of cards I will get as far as aspect by buying these, but they are at a higher rate. I have tickets here available as well. These are for entering tournaments or the Spellweaver Trials. So if you're familiar with Hearthstone's arena and paying to get into that, kind of the same type of deal there. And then I can buy card backs too. Now these are cash shop only. Now I do want to show you conversion rates here. So think of it here. It's basically 10 crystals per card. So we've got 40 crystals for four cards, 100. You get a bit, you get a discount if you buy the big box set there, but it's basically, for all intents and purposes, if you don't pick the specific packages, which are a little pricier, uh, by 40 crystals, it's 10 crystals per card. So let's get more crystals and see what our rate is here. So we've got 250 crystals for five bucks, and then we start saving on the way up, and we can even pick up some extras, extra cards and extra tickets when we get to the uh, tier four and tier five packages. So that is about two cents. Well, it's, yeah, well, almost exactly uh, two cents a point. And you need 10 points for a card. So think of cards as being about 20 cents per card. In this case, you're looking at about a buck 20 for your four card pack. Um, and there you go. Five bucks, 250, did I do the math right there? 
Yeah, I did that right. That's 500 pennies, 250 crystals, two pennies per crystal. So yeah, we're, we're right. So think of it about 20 cents per card. Uh, and then, of course, you can get gold, too, if you wanted to buy that. This is You're going to earn this in-game, though, uh, and pretty quickly, uh, actually. I, at least so far, it's, it's the initial leveling experience. I'm almost up to 30,000. Like, when I gained level 2 and maybe it was level 4, I don't know. I got 10,000 gold each time. So you, you can earn gold pretty quickly, at least to start out with. Now the heroes themselves, I can start building a new deck, but I have to assign a hero. I've already got my Goblin Assault and Undead Hordes deck, so if I want to modify those, I can edit the deck and start changing out. Boy, that interface looks really familiar. Wow. That, uh, yeah. Okay, scroll bar on the right, that's looking familiar. Looking very, very familiar. Trials, I don't have tickets, and you have to be level 8 to do them. Uh, but think of it as like the uh, the arena type stuff. Now there are tournaments planned and things like that. Let's jump into another quick battle. This time I'll go against normal, and we'll we'll talk one more time. The Q times against what the hell? Oh, I did not mean to switch decks. I don't know any of these damn cards. <laughs> All right, we'll keep the hand. Why not? We'll keep it. All right. Well, one corruption level. Yeah, sure. And a zombie. All right. You can never go wrong with zombie legionnaires. What do we got out here? They've got two of these already. What the hell are... Stop! Stop! It's just a 1-1 creature. 1-1 elf creature. All right, I'm going to... Now, I cannot make this block. See? If I wanted this to block, it's my, my turn to act. They've opted to attack my hero directly. I would just click, left click, and drag the arc over to that card, but I can't. Why? Swiftness. Four swiftness here, one swiftness here. So I'm gonna have to eat that point of damage, no other option. My turn. All right, we'll throw this out and get some mana. Creature gets negative two, negative two until the end of turn. I got two of those. Another zombie legionnaire. When infected, the survivor dies. Summon a zombie legionnaire. Creature onto the field. All right. We'll put out another legionnaire. Um, these are one mana. What is my ability? An enemy creature gets one negative one SP until the end of turn. And then this should be just my shrine. Yeah, just a divine offering for the shrine. All right. Let's... Um, Okay, so I cannot opt to make these attack here, see? Eh, nope, they're too fast for me. So what I've got to do is I'm going to attack all... Uh, you know what? Let's cancel that for a second. Let's get rid of one of these by giving them negative two, negative two. Then we'll attack. And if they want to block, they can, because they have the swiftness. They're going to opt to take the damage, so we've got a 19 to 18 game. My opponents, I can see my opponent's level and mana resources, and uh, they have five cards in their hand, so nobody really has card advantage at the moment. Still early in the game, though. I'm going to have to take that, because I don't have any... Yep, I don't even have the mana to make somebody unblockable. All right. Well, we got to eat that one. Let's get this out here, get some more mana. We'll put out the infected survivor. We will get rid of one of these, and we will attack with all. What what happened there? Ah, okay, that's why. I was like, wait, why did two cards disappear there? All right, so now we've got an 18 to 14 lead. Things are looking up a little bit. We were getting initially stomped pretty badly. I still can't block this thing, because it's four swiftness, and I've got three on the infected survivor so we'll just keep getting plucked for that one damage over and over and over throw this out let's go corruption level because we've got something here a legendary once per turn summon a zombie legionnaire creature onto the field ah uh, yeah well we'll do that yeah hell yeah we'll do that and we'll launch a three-pronged attack here are they, they're going to have to opt to defend sooner or later. They can't keep plucking me for one damage when it's 17 to 9. We'll end my turn. 
And especially since I have my little legendary here, that curse spell. Uh, you know, I'll just take your two damage. That's fine. And now, will this automatically do this? Oh, yep. Sweet. So you don't even, I didn't even have to uh, remember to click it or anything like that. All right, let's get rid of the faster of the two of these things. Uh, let's put out my bedeviled fiend here, 5-3. We're in really good shape on normal difficulty here. Go ahead and attack. Now, they're going to have to defend a little bit here. Uh, they put a card back in my hand, so my fiend goes back in my hand. And we lost one, but it's now a 15-4 to game in our favor with a corruption deck that I've never played with before. What do I have to do? Uh, put up two creatures, artifacts, or spells on top of their owner's deck in any order. Select a card and put it on top of the deck. Uh, yeah, we're going to put that back on the top of the deck then. Since you took my ability to summon monsters. Now, there's what I'm talking about. They just opted to attack a certain creature and then a hero. And I still cannot... There's really nothing to do there. I can't... I can't stop that incoming damage based on speed. All right, so it's our turn. We've got our Restless Tombs back, so we will play that. We'll put out another Zombie Legionnaire. A hero sacrifices two creatures. Well, that would be nice to drop out on there. What do I need, though? Uh, I have everything I need. Two levels, five mana, and then my Bedeviled Fiend, which they threw back into my hand. Again, no card advantage. Still kind of 2-2 two to two here. We've got a 14-2 to two game. This one's looking favorable for us. And what's that do? We got a flying support creature. So can attack and block from the support line. Creatures on the support line are protected from attack. So even if I had something with four swiftness, I can't hit their support line. Uh, yeah. So they're gonna... Oh, they got rid of that again. Damn it. The last time they put it back in my hand. This time they got it out of the game. All uh, right, flying. When Mesmerizing Spirit enters the field, an enemy discard, enemy hero discards a card. So go ahead and get rid of one. We'll put our fiend friend back out there. We will attack all. Oh, it's going to be 14 to 1. Those two creatures will wash. And we've got a 14 to 1 game. And my infected survivor is back on the field. And what do we got here? What is, ooh, splitting headache. The enemy hero discards two cards. The enemy hero does not have any cards in his hand. Oh, that's cool how the text of the card updated to reflect that there's a zero hand over there. So we're gonna make you sacrifice two creatures. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna use that on myself. And we will attack all and end this bad boy. Not too shabby for a deck I have never even glanced at the cards with. I kind of like the way that played. It felt like more of a, um, a minion-based deck with lots of one ones and two twos and things like that that you can swarm with. And so we've got our fame. Take it up. Got some gold. And do uh, we have any quests that we're progressing on? Zero one, zero one, zero one. Zero of one, zero of one. These are acquiring starter decks, so I would have to buy those starter decks. Play 10 quick battles with a corruption hero, so I've already done one. Now, I finished that quest for Rage. Um, you don't have to win them for that quest, that unlock quest. You just have to play them. So these are going to be my corruption quests down here. Well, there you go, gang. That's Spellweaver by Dream Reactor. Uh, free to play in open beta right now. Goes into launch in the early February. Expect a tutorial to come with the official launch. But if you want to check it out, head on over to the game. It's a very quick download. And until next time, gang, this is Magic Man from MMOBomb.com saying stay safe. We'll see you out on the servers. Stay